This episode of the Fight Within podcast is presented to you by Meguiar's. For over 115 years, Meguiar's has been carefully creating and producing advanced formulas with cutting-edge chemistry to deliver a show car perfect appearance. Whether you're showing on the fairway, finalizing your car for auction, or simply getting your beloved car ready for a weekend drive, Meguiar's is ready to help with their premium car care products to make every automotive surface look its absolute best. Meguiar's, reflect your passion. Make sure to visit them at meguiar's.com. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Fight Within podcast. Today's guest is the Filipino wrecking machine, Mark <laughs> Munoz. Mark, thanks for coming on, man, for the third yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. You're like the show's uh, MVP. What's mm-hmm. up, man? And, What's up? Uh, <laughs> there's we we've talked about your journey we've talked about your story mm-hmm. uh all the obstacles you'd have to overcome and now there's this like crazy obstacle because there's a superhero <laughs> a filipino superhero that has to overcome all these crazy obstacles <laughs> yeah tell us who yeah. he is and and what what he does <laughs> yeah so um i uh, star in a movie and I'm actually Lumpia Man, and and uh, it's called Lumpia with a Vengeance. It's actually a <laughs> sequel to a cult classic hit um, that was done back in the '90s. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm Kuya, which means older brother in, in Tagalog and Filipino. And uh, and I go around, and I you know pretty much take out bad guys with lumpia <laughs> so um so i have a, a deep fryer on one hip and a freezer on the other other hip and like whenever i whenever i need to use my lumpia i transfer it from the freezer to the to the fryer and then i pop it up and i throw it at my adversaries that is amazing <laughs> yeah, but yeah. How, so, how was that yeah how, how was it going from mma you know always yeah. being one of the top ranked fighters in your division when while yeah. you were competing yeah. to making a superhero movie <laughs> with Lumpia. With Lumpia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I actually um during during our during my fight career, I actually end up being in a movie with Kevin James. Yeah. Yeah, I um, remember that. Yeah, yeah, it's called Here Comes a Boom. That's like Here Comes a Boom. Yeah, That's and, right. and everybody like pretty much I mean, all of our training partners were there oh, in, yeah. in the in the film. I mean, Christoph was in the film um, He's like the main you know, bad guy. Yeah, main bad yeah. guy. And there was like Hoffield Cordero was in it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Vanderlei was in it. I mean, you know, Jason Mayan Miller was in it. I mean, there was a lot of lot of uh, Satoshi Ishii was in so, it. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, about so that. I mean, a lot of our training partners were in that yeah. were in that yeah. film, and that and that kind of gave me some, you know, like wow, this is cool, man. Yeah. You know, movies like this is this is pretty neat, you know? And so I got to like rub elbows with like stunt coordinators and, you know, producers, executive producers and stuff like that. And so that got me into, um, um, the, uh, the, the film game, you know? And so, um, so from there and then, um, Patricio Janosso, who is the, the, um, director for this film, Lumpia with a Vengeance. He, um, thought about you know uh, a, a filipino loop uh, a filipino superhero and uh, he's like man i watched a lot of your fights and you know you'd be perfect for it because yeah. um the storyline behind the film is kuya gets bullied um by by people you know yeah. and i actually got you bullied got bull- you know yeah. so i have an anti-bullying campaign that i do called uh, i've got your back and um you know and so he heard, he caught wind of that, and he's like, "Man, you're Kuya. You need to <laughs> yeah. be in this movie, you know." And so, so uh, that was that was really cool that um, he wanted to cast me for it, and and I'm actually one of the executive producers for it too. So that's uh, wild. So yeah. So I mean, hopefully we can you know f- you know get we're talking to Sony Pictures, uh, Warner Brothers right now to get distribution, um, and we'll see what happens. You know so. Was it hard? Are do you are you naturally good at acting? Because I know I would be so bad at it. Camera goes on me, and I would be like, "What do I yeah. do?" Yeah, um, I actually did some plays and stuff when I was growing up. I was, okay. um, 
I'm Filipino, so we love to sing, and so I was in the choir. I didn't get that um, gene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, I, you know, I was in a choir, and I did, you know, for my church, I did some like plays, uh, some mm-hmm. musicals, and stuff like that. So, um, and I was in the choir, and we did choir tours and choreographed stuff, and I actually choreographed cotillions, you know. Oh, so, dang. Um, so it's like a debutante ball where, in the Filipino culture. Um, when a when a um, girl turns eighteen years old, mm-hmm. they welcome into womanhood at eighteen, and they have a big. I've been debutante, to a couple, yeah, yeah, debutante party, and then there's the waltz and the cha cha. Well, I used to choreograph the waltz and the cha cha, <laughs> and used to make money. I choreographed probably like eight of them, eight or nine of them, and uh, yeah, so um, I used to do that too. So. That's crazy. Yeah. Wild. yeah yeah so um that's what i've known yeah. mark for <clears throat> probably close to 10 years yeah because i went to your gym to now 2000 yeah 2010 so yeah, yeah yeah going on 10 years yeah i literally did not know that about him that's like yeah. the first time that's i've heard yeah. that yeah it's what a, up? i'm like layers bro. I'm, I'm, i got layers bro like, <laughs> Remember uh, shrek? ogres <laughs> have ogres have layers man like, i'm like shrek bro uh, i look like shrek now too so <laughs> no, you, i'm the filipino good. shrek man <laughs> heavy, heavyweight no, yeah good. yeah what uh yeah. um obviously when we were training so for for those of you that don't know i was a fighter out of his gym uh rain training center um and, and mark was a co the coach the owner <laughs> the uh instructor the and everything yeah. but uh more than that he was he was one of my mentors and, and a lot of other guys and, and he had such a, a huge impact in my life and my mma career along with with i'm sure a ton of our, our training partners and, and teammates mm. but um knowing you in, in not only in your family life but knowing you as a as an athlete competing at the highest level you always trained with a lot of intensity a lot of dedication mm. and and you know you you have your 5Ds yeah and and that's a, that's a big model that we had in the gym did you take that same approach into acting or into filming as far as getting ready for it and yeah and and preparing yeah i did and and you know I think I think it it stems to, in to a lot of areas in your life, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the five D's are desire, direction, diligence, discipline, and dedication. So, mm-hmm. you know, and so everyone has a desire to be successful. You yeah. know, you can be successful in a lot of things, you know. And so, you know, but you got to have a direction in order to be successful in that desire that you want to get into, you know. So, um, and that and the direction is um, goals. You got to yeah. have goals and aspirations and you got to have, you, you know, a, a written out game plan. And you got to, if you, if you fail the plan, you plan to fail, you know? And so yep. you got to have direction, you know? And so then with direction, you got to have diligence, which is hard work, you know? And so you got to work hard towards your goals, towards your desire, right? Not only you got to have that, but you got to have discipline, you know? Yeah. So, you know, like as a fighter, you got to, you know, you know, not only with diet and exercise, but you got to live right. You know, you got to, you got to sleep well, you know, you got to, you know, um, make sure you're getting all your workouts in your training sessions in, and you just got to live like a healthy lifestyle, you know, and then there's dedication. You know, another synonym for dedication is devotion. You got to be devoted or dedicated to, um, to doing those things in order to be successful. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, it does go into my, I guess my acting career now, you yeah. know, so, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and so with me being on set and, you know, um, learning all the stunts and, you know, doing all the things that an actor does, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a lot, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm up for the challenge, you know, and, yeah, and, and, cool. and, um, it's uh it's really cool i love it and you know it's it's different man because when i'm doing the stunts uh, i'm used to actually hitting somebody like it's it's hard to fake punch somebody you know did you punch someone on accident i actually did yeah a few times um and uh i was like oh dude i'm so sorry you know but but um 
but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, you know, cause I'm used to following through with my punches yeah. and I'm like holding yeah. back, you know, but I used to do that too. And, you know, and I spar, I didn't, I didn't like when you said I, I trained with intensity, I did train with an intensity, but I made sure I wasn't going to hurt my training partners too, you know? Where's so, my camera? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> but I used to get them so tired that they wanted to quit, though. Oh, you know? was, I almost yeah. quit one time when yeah. he was on. You were just on top of me. You had me yeah. full mount. Yeah. And just the hip pressure. Like, yeah. I couldn't breathe. That yeah. sounds awful. And so I almost wanted to tap. <laughs> that literally sounds awful. And I was like, yeah. oh, my goodness. That pressure but, makes you feel like you're going to explode. Yeah. That's I terrible. mean, that's, that's – and I, and I you know, I coach, I coach MMA fighters now. And, you know, I always talk about, you know, being a great – being a good training partner and you know if you break your toys you'll have nothing to play with yeah you know and so um and you need your training partners in order to be 100%. successful you know and so you know you don't want to knock them out you don't want to break the arm you don't yeah. want to choke them out you know i mean it's like if you get something and you know you have it like you know you know you have it like don't don't you know go all the way through with it you yeah. know what i'm saying um, just like in striking, I can be a great striker and learn how to be a great striker without knocking somebody out. Oh, 100%. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and just to work on your precision, precision, your accuracy, your accuracy and your timing. I mean, you can take off the power because when you do mitt work or bag work, you can then, you know, put, yeah. put some stank on those punches, you know? So, um, so yeah, I mean, there's being a good training partner. You know, is is having the intensity, but also protecting your your training partners too. Yeah. You know, so I want to have somebody quit, you know, but not hurt them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Physically hurt you them. Take their will. I want, like you make yeah, them give up. I I make them like want to like tap because of my pressure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't tap. But but <laughs> but see that's but that's gonna make them better. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. And so and so I would teach. And you, you probably, you you probably can attest to this. I would teach them how to defend what I do to them, so then therefore I I can get better in return. Yeah. So I can counter what I just taught you and make myself better at the same time. Yeah. So so everyone gets elevated inside the gym, and it's not just one person, but the whole team. Well, mm -hmm. I very specifically remember being against the wall, and you had me on. All, I was on all fours. And you had a hip control, and you were punching me, <laughs> and you were coaching me and telling me to like knee slide when I couldn't, because you were blocking my knee. I was like, how do you want me to do this? <laughs> yeah. Eventually, it happened. I'm sure you let me out, you know. But it, it's I can 100 percent attest to that, and and yeah. it made us better. But how how yeah. do you how has that transition been for you to go from being a top level athlete, competing, and then having like this literally just picture perfect retirement fight mm -hmm. you know who cares about the career who cares about anything the way you retired in the philippines mm -hmm. in in a, a place that you love so much yeah you know you 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 fight a, a very tough opponent luke barnett i remember because i helped you get ready for it over at the ruka gym mm -hmm. you were so focused but yet so relaxed at the same time and, yeah. and that confidence carried over to the fight and then you go to the Philippines. You're fighting with, was Uriah on that on that card? Yep, yeah, Uriah and Frankie Edgar. So one of the guys yeah. that brought you into the sport, yeah. who, who you still have a very yeah. co close relationship yeah, with. Love that guy. In front of your 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 people, mm -hmm. and they give you the mic. Yeah. And and yeah. you got to talk for a few minutes. Yeah. And address the people like how. Yeah. You go from that high to. Going home and living a normal life, and <laughs> yeah. and then how do you, how does that transition go? Like how do you how do you do that? How do you deal? How do you deal with it? Um, just to preface this answer, like I I I have three F's in my life, you know. One is faith. Yeah. Second is family. Then everyone. Then everybody else is friends. You know. And yeah. so, you know, and the straw that broke the camel's back was my son. Although my wife and I, Christy, we were running a gym. We were raising four kids. Um, I was training to be, you know, a world champion in the UFC. Um, I was coaching. I was teaching. 
I was doing my speaking engagements. I was doing military tours, um, you know, and coaching my wrestling club. And every weekend we would, you know, go and um, wrestle at tournaments. So I was a busy guy, you know. And so um, I was getting pulled in a lot of directions sure. and, and uh, never home, you know. And so, you know, having those priorities, I was just like, you know, my daughter was having some behavioral issues and daddy was just never home, yeah. you know? And um, it was tough and Chris and I would have a lot of extended conversations about, you know, what, how, how are we gonna maneuver through this? And we would pray and, and get down on our knees and, you know, ask God like what, how can we get through this? And, and it, 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 you know, God just led me, God guided me. And I basically, wasn't listening, but God slapped me in the face and said, <laughs> you know, your wife is a single mom. Uh, your daughter's having behavioral issues and your son wants to quit soccer and baseball and wants to wrestle and he wants you to coach him. Like, wake up. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? And, you know, then Psalm 23, it says, um, Psalm 23, it says, he will make you lie down in green pastures. He will lay you beside still waters. He will restore your soul. And it says, he will make you lay down. He was making me lay down because I wasn't, I wasn't listening. Yeah. You know, and, <clears throat> you know, and he restored my soul, man, like. You know, I, right then and there, I was just like, when my son said, Dad, I want you to coach me. I don't quit soccer and baseball. I want you to coach me. I was like, all right. You know, and so that was the moment. I And and, uh, and I looked at my daughter, and, you know, I was like, you know, I need to be here for her. And I was like, man, my wife is being a single mom right now and running the business at the same time. And yeah. I'm just and I'm just training and, and trying to provide for the family and, you know, do all these things. But, you know, I'm not really being a father or a husband, you know. Was it so, a hard shift, though? Because the sport is very <clears throat> selfish. Yeah, I mean, you know me, man. Like, I, I I, had a hard time focusing on myself sometimes, you know. Oh, yeah, I mean. You know, I mean, I would give and give and give to a lot of people. And, and even when I was in training camp, yeah, I would still help out people, you know. And so... That's that was kind of what I didn't do right, I guess, yeah. you know, um, because if you can't help yourself, you can't help other people, I guess, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's led me to where I am now, you know, where I'm coaching, you know, I'm coaching, you know, I coach, you know, UFC champions, UFC contenders, Bellator champions, Bellator contenders and. I'm even coaching some people in the one FC chant one one FC, you know. I mean, it's like um, I'm coaching now, and I'm coaching uh, wrestlers um, in high school, college, and and middle school and elementary school. Dang. I just got <laughs> I just got a job at this um, uh, school called Fairmont mm -hmm. Athletic Academy, where I, I'll get to coach. Um, kids that want to you know excel in in the sport of amateur wrestling you know and so um i'm getting i'm getting to do what i love man yeah. you know i mean um when i fought i coached at the same time you know and so um for me this is this is what god has called me to do and i'm using my talents gifts and abilities to be able to build a kingdom in that way you know and so that's and that's cool. what i love to do man i mean god led me you know he led me into fighting and I truly believe that. And, you know, and then he's guiding me and leading me now and using fighting as a way to reach people, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I love it. Has your, has your faith grown because of that? Oh, yeah. Because you haven't yeah. seen, like, you, you knew that you were, weren't being obedient. Mm -hmm. And then you, you saw the, the position you were in your life to now... Like, okay, God, I'm, I'm going to be obedient. Like, you're going to make me lay down. And mm -hmm. uh, on our last episode with Art, he had mentioned the same thing, how he, God, like, forced him in, into yeah. certain situations. Things, yeah. yeah. And so I think the cool thing, though, too, yeah. is what you were just, like, talking about is, like, God obviously works in 
mysterious ways, right? Yeah. Sometimes we got to get face planted before we mm-hmm. we realize 100%. it. Yeah. But I think what's cool is you can take those five D's that you have mm-hmm. and put them into these kids because yep. we're living in a time, man, where kids need good role models. Yeah, man. And now you're, like For you sure. said, you're being able to use your gifts and your talents that God's mm-hmm. blessed you with in order to not only just teach them wrestling and fighting, yeah. but to be a light in darkness yeah. to, to kids and adults. 100%. And I think that's something yeah. super cool. And, and the same principles apply yeah. to that, which mm-hmm. is, which is rad. Yeah. And I, and I love, I love the position I'm in right now. And, um, who knows, you know, I, I, I probably would have been divorced and not had custody of my kids if I just decided to keep fighting. You know, I don't know. You never know. Yeah. I, you yeah. never know. You never know. But, but I mean, it was getting to that way because I, <clears throat> I was never home, never home. I mean, I was at yeah. the gym. I would take the kids to school, and then the only time I would spend with them was when we were at the gym. You know, yeah, that's, that's it. Be hard. Yeah, and we but didn't even have dinners. Have, I don't think I don't think people re- like you were there. You would take the kids. Then we had pro practice. Yeah. Later on, when when the training lab was there, you would go to strength and conditioning at, at eight or nine, yeah. jump straight into pro practice at ten. Yeah, train for a couple hours, you mm-hmm. know, two twelve, twelve thirty. Mm-hmm. Then you would leave to go get food. Mm-hmm. Olympia, Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris, the year you would go pick up the kids. Then they'd come to the gym because you had to teach again. Mm-hmm. Like you guys were lit- you and Christy were literally at the gym. From morning till night. Yep. And then yep. and I just, I, don't, I don't think people like realize mm-hmm. how that can affect your relationship, how that can yeah. affect your business decisions, mm-hmm. how that can affect your career. Like people think like, oh, it's this gym, and, and there's so many good fighters there, and such a good gym, and but yeah. but they don't get to they don't like the same way that you cared about us and took the time to teach us and coach us and show us and share your knowledge. Like we should have cared about you <laughs> like as a it's person yeah you know yeah because i i see and and i know and i know you see them too because you're tagging them all the time it's like we have we always get all these team pictures and people always yeah. tag and yeah. and it's like this memory popped up and it's like this used to be rain and and you know yeah. we're killers and blah. but then it, it's, it's like what what kind of uh emotions do you feel hmm. like are you are you happy are you sad like what what do you feel when you see those those pictures and and those memories because you you bred a lot yeah of of high level fighters yeah a lot and we're um, the who's who in that in that era of of fighters would come to your gym i mean yeah one of the greatest anderson silva yeah came to you and sought you for wrestling Mm -hmm. so like how, how does it make you feel now being able to look back now and say, "Wow, like I, I really built something," you know, and I helped a lot of people out, and I yeah. and I know your heart for people and how much you love people. Yeah. And and but at the same time, there has to be some sort of like satisfaction because you're like, man, I, I get to spend time with my family. Mm-hmm. You helped, and we can get into more later. Like you helped your son get a scholarship to ASU, yeah, and is now one of the top ranked athlete wrestlers in, in amateur and collegiate wrestling, like. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of memories do you what what do you feel? And that that was one of the fan questions that we had. What's your favorite memory yeah. from Rain? But <clears throat> what kind of emotions do you feel? How do you feel when you see those memories pop up? Actually, the picture popped up I think a couple of days ago, and I reposted it. Uh-huh. And <clears throat> man, I just I had posted it, and and I said, man, miss those days, but more but mostly I miss the people. Yeah, you know, because. <clears throat> we used to remember we had like you know we used to have barbecues at afterwards yeah. and we used to kind of just linger longer man you know i mean after practice we should just hang out and it was like an actual you know, family gym family yeah, yeah man it was it was you know although we punch each other in the face <laughs> and like submitted each other and stuff like that we still like generally like loved each other you know that's your filipino side though yeah man it the is. hospitality it is man i mean i i i grew up that way and mm-hmm. you know i wanted my gym to be the same way you know so um i wanted people to feel welcome you know i wanted people to feel um that they can be a champion at that gym 
but also feel loved and respected yeah and cared for you know um but it's not to say i'm not gonna punch you in the face though, you know what i'm saying <laughs> um because i'm gonna love you yeah but i'm gonna punch you too you know so um and it's and it you need that you it's know so tough love literally. it is tough yeah. love you know but there has to be there has to be a level of trust with your training partners because I've had to kick people out of the gym, you I've, know, and I, because they were knocking people out because because their egos were too big. Yeah, I've know? actually heard that yeah. before. That it, bef- yeah. I mean, obviously, I was never a part of your gym, but like I have heard stories about you kicking people out of the gym. Yeah, because when I when I was in the Marine Corps. You're, that's when like the rain was big in this area. Yeah. And I would always hear like, you know, some of my buddies that would go in and out of the gym and train. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I've never even heard of this place because I was gone for so long. Yeah. And I had heard stories about you kicking people out, which is, I thought was rad. <laughs> yeah. I, I think mean, more just, gyms need that. Well, because I wanted to keep a, a level of respect mm-hmm. and trust inside the gym. And I wanted people to trust me that I was going to do the right thing. You know, and, and I always gave people the le- the memo, you know, like um, one of the guests that's going to be on the show, I kicked out, <laughs> you know, and I still love, I love him. Like yeah. I love him like a brother, like, and we still have a, an amazing relationship, but I kicked him out because I couldn't have that, you know? And, yeah. And he understood, you know, because that's- I, I told him beforehand and then when he did it, I had to discipline them. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a father or a parent, right? Like if your kid runs, he's two years old. If your kid's running, runs into the street and you say, I told you not to run into the street. Don't run into the street. Yeah. You know, and you don't discipline him. Well, what is he going to do? Run in the he's going to run the street again. Yeah. And get he hurt. gets hit by the car. I told you not to get run into the street. Yeah. You know, third time he gets hit by the car and dies. Whose fault is it? Yours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, so like for me, like I I had to follow through with the rules that I set in place, you know, and I, and I always tell them and I preface this before I kick them out. I was like, look, I love you. Yeah. And I have nothing against you, but these are the rules. Yeah. And you got to understand the culture that I'm building here. Yeah. And if you're not willing to go by the rule sets, then I can't have you in here. Yeah. And then I feel like you're keeping me out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but but I mean that's that's important, you know, to build that culture. It was super important. I wanted to protect as much as I could that culture, you know. I think you so. solidified it. Because I don't I don't think <clears throat> I don't think I've talked to I don't think there has been one person that it, that either trained at the gym and was actually part of our team mm-hmm. or anyone that came by and 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 just kind of stop by because we had a lot of guys just come in and stop by mm-hmm. that ever had anything bad to say yeah about not just you but the the culture in the gym that you built mm-hmm. so yeah. i think it's it's something that that you should definitely be proud of um well there's that. like a way to to do that like to, as a, a healthy discipline you know like f- like father like the father you know oh, yeah. like yeah. and i think sure. people associate in today's world at least yeah. discipline equals you're an awful human being or they're, yeah. you know, discipline is needed without discipline. discipline is, we discipline have nothing. Is love. Yeah. And you it's don't discipline. It's you don't love them. I think people forget yeah. that. And I, yeah. and then maybe when they have a kid and have a situation where it's don't mm-hmm. run out in the front, in front of the car. Cause we don't want you to get hurt. Like yeah. they have that experience yeah. and now yeah. they're like, Oh yeah, I guess discipline isn't bad. And you're like, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, yeah. there's a way to do it. Like a kind of like a, for lack of better terms, a jerk, yeah. but, yeah, if, you know, there's a healthy discipline too. Yep, there is, and that's that's how I, you know, I'm like, hey, you know the rules, yeah, and you violated them, and in order for me to keep a great culture here that we've built so strongly, <clears throat> I can't have this anymore. Yeah, so I can't have you come back. You know, and it was the hardest things that one of the hardest things that I had to do. Um, because I'm not that, I'm not that guy. Like, no, no. I, I, I hated doing that. And like, I, I am not that guy, but, but it, it was needed. You yeah, know, like you hard. said, it was needed. That's but, hard to do though. But, um, you know, 
but they knew that I loved them at the yeah. same time, you know? Yeah. So, um, it's, you know, for me, like it's building something like that. I mean, you gotta, you got, you gotta like write the rules down and you gotta adhere to them. And then you gotta love on people, man. You know, I mean, that's, everyone wants to feel loved and respected Yeah, yeah. and, and they want to be trusted, you know? And so, you know, in order to get that culture, you got to put responsibility on people. And if they don't come through with the responsibilities, then they got to be disciplined, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, that's how you build a big, that's how you build a culture, you know, because if mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't do it that way, then it's like. It's people are just gonna all. run. Yeah, people yeah. are just gonna run rampant. Or wow, run. Is it hard ways. for you because, like, you're you're <clears throat> pretty widely considered. It's like one of the the nicest guy in MMA. <laughs> yeah, and then you gotta yeah. lay down that law. Yeah, is it like? Yeah, I mean, I do it in a way like like a healthy discipline. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I I you know first, whenever I had to have or confront anybody about you know, kicking them out into the gym or kicking them out of the gym or, or like a disciplinary behavior or whatever, I made sure I let them know like, hey, you know, I have nothing against you. Yeah. But for us to build a successful culture and gym here, I need to have these things in place. Yeah. And if these things aren't in place, then I have to discipline or you know i have to get rid of it like these are you the know? steps if you yeah. don't, if you mess up this yeah. is what's gonna happen and so in return what happened was sometimes they would come back and say you know i learned my lesson you know yeah and they would come back and they said they learned their lesson and and uh i'm like all right you know if you learned your lesson then cool you know and then you know, I had one time where I had to re-kick somebody out, you know, <laughs> but then, but then they came back and they're like, you know what, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is the best gym around. Like, I'm, I'm I apologize and it's never going to happen again. It didn't happen again, you yeah. know, so. Third time's a charm. <laughs> yeah, third time's a charm. But, but, you know, I, you know, I was, I was a man of my word, you know, and I was going to follow through with what I said. And do it in a way where they understood mm -hmm. that it was nothing personal, but everything, you know, to their development, you know. So, and I, and I always told them, I said, look, this is, this, I'm not only, you know, helping you to be a world champion inside the octagon or cage or wherever you compete, but I want you to be the best human being you can be as well. That's you know? awesome. And I don't. I don't want you to be just a champion inside the cage, but um, an upstanding person, man yeah. or woman outside of the cage as well. You know, so you know, so I mean, the reason why the reason why the gym was called Rain is because I wanted, you know, I wanted God to reign over the gym, yeah. and and who wants who does not want to reign over their opponents as well yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying that's cool so i didn't know that yeah, yeah. so cool. um you know and and you know for me and i'm a, I'm a man of faith and i'm always going to live by that and people always knew that i was that way you know but at the same time i might be the nicest guy but at the same time i'm gonna follow through with what i say oh yeah you know and i'm gonna do it in a way where where I still love them and I have nothing against them. I'll still invite them to barbecues, yeah. <laughs> but they're not allowed in the gym to train. You did know? you, did you have that as a, <clears throat> as a, not, not a mindset, but was that something that you wanted to accomplish when you opened the gym was make that impact on people? Because I, I'm not the only one to say it. There's guys, you know, other guys that, that say you had such a positive impact in their life and you help mold them and, and build them and, mm -hmm. and not help them outside of of the gym. And I'm talking like guys like Jake Ellenberger, Joe Ellenberger, I mean, Roger Shippen, mm -hmm. Arian. Uh, th there's yeah. guys that were up and coming fighters to guys that were, you know, on, on TV and, and fighting yeah. for belts and stuff. And, and yeah. you had that same impact on all of them. Like, was mm -hmm. that a goal that you had set or, no. or is that just no natural? <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and I think. I think 
I, I, and I told you I'm a man of faith, and I think if you're walking in that, if you're walking in God's will, you know, things like that will happen, yeah. you know? And, and loving on people, like you said. And loving on people, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, for me, like, I, I'm always going to live by faith, hmm. you know? Not by sight, you yeah. know, but live by faith. And Amen. and that's 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 <laughs> what... Preach. That's that's just how I am, and and that's how I'm always gonna live, and that's and that's how I'm gonna live till I die, you know. Yeah, so that's amazing. Um, for me, that's that's what it was all about because, and I'm just gonna love on people. I will punch you in the face. <laughs> I will choke you out, but I'll do it in a loving way, you know. <laughs> but I will teach you how to defend what I just did, and that's just the nature of our sport. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. If I'm not doing that to you you're not going to be the best in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I have to do that. You know, I have to do those things. Do I have you, to, I have to, I have to show you what it takes to be the best. Do you feel like a better coach now because of your experiences? Oh yeah. You know, I think, I think, I think the best coaches take their experiences that they've had uh -huh. and apply them to whoever they coach. You know, I think, mm. I think, the best coaches, if you think about it, Vince Lombardi, you know, he was a great, he was a football player. I mean, and you don't necessarily have to be the best yeah. athlete either, you know, but what you can do is take the things that you've learned and apply those principles and those, um, and those um, perspectives and thought processes and mentality to all the athletes that you coach, you know? And, you know, for me, that's like, I feel like God's put me in this position and he's allowed me to acquire all these skills, you know, to be the best coach that I can be, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm going to teach like, and somebody might ask me a question and I have like five or six things I could teach them. And they're like, wow, I didn't even think of it that way. And I'm like, yeah, me neither. You know, this is like, I don't even know where I came from, you know, but, yeah. but, you know, it was from my experiences, you know, you can ask me anything and I, and I can pop off questions. I can pop up answers to your questions. Like, like nobody's business, you know? Um, and I have this thing that I do for my camps and I do camps all around the nation. And, uh, and I tell them, if you give me a question that I cannot answer, I will, I will outfit you with a thousand dollars worth of retail in like warm ups, hoodies, wrestling shoes, shorts, t shirts. I'll give you everything West Coast. Yeah. You know, West Coast wrestling camps. And they're like, What? And so they ask all these questions and <laughs> I've done it for over twenty years and no one has stumped me yet, you know? And so I attribute that to like God's like wisdom. You know, Qu like wrestling questions, wrestling questions. Yeah. Technical questions. Uh -oh. It can't be like, who was the first wrestler to ever <laughs> wrestle? It can't be like that. It's gotta be, it's gotta pertain to like technique. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, no one's ever stumped me. I've been doing it for over 20 years. That's crazy. That's yeah. your West coast wrestling camp. Is it on mm -hmm. this year? Well, I mean, who knows COVID yeah. man, you know, I had to cancel it last year because of COVID. Boo. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> who knows man i don't know we'll see what happens but you know i'll take it i'll take it in stride and see what happens well the same way that <clears throat> that those kids get to ask you questions we asked uh our followers <laughs> uh if they had any questions for you nice and and we had some so yeah. you could ask uh bang out one yeah from a buddy yeah. so you can ask yours he, first and i'll find the ones he asked um if you think kids should cut weight when they're either doing a wrestling tournament mm. or a jiu-jitsu tournament yeah um that's the question first question do you think kids should be cutting weight no um i think the only way that they should be losing weight for a for a competition is only through diet okay and they need to eat you know like they need, they're they're so, growing their kids yeah they have to eat like if they are starving themselves and not eating mm -hmm. pss, no boy no no Which good. led him into the next question. If they did need to cut weight, what what do you think is like a healthy range? So there's 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 techniques, and I used to lose a lot of weight, like 
people in the gym used to be like, dang, you know, Munoz, like, how do you lose so much weight so fast? Like, and I have these techniques. Um, well, one is called in, one is called intermittent <laughs> fasting, you know, so intermittent fasting and, you know, fasted cardio and, and, um, you know, obviously you got to have, you got to have a deficiency of calories mm -hmm. output versus calorie input. You know I mean? It's no, no secret to that, but, but at the same time, <clears throat> you know, discipline is huge in that, you know? So like for me, for kids, like I, I don't want anybody losing more than two or three pounds you okay. know, to, to make a weight class you and know you were saying that's usually up to about like 16 years old yeah about 16 take. years old give or take you know um and then once they get about 17 18 they can start losing 10 to 15 pounds you know i mean i mean because they're they're at an age where you know they're they've they've got their muscle mass and all yeah. that stuff they're they're growing you know but they're still probably growing a little bit but but um i still want them eating i never want them to lose or to to not have a meal, mm -hmm. you know they gotta have sustenance, yeah. you know, to grow, you know. So, um, so I would say if you are having trouble making weight, lift, get big, and be a better athlete. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So learn how to be better at, you know, one lift, get strong. You yeah. Know? Two refine the technique that you're doing on mm -hmm. the mat and then three you know have fun yeah you know because cutting weight is not fun yeah like i've known a lot of great wrestlers to to quit wrestling because they've had to cut so much weight yeah it sounds awful know? and sounds yeah awful. so so i don't want i don't want that ever happening to to anybody, especially especially if they're like eight, nine, ten year old kid. Yeah. Come on, That's man. That's like trauma. I've seen kids at big tournaments where their coaches or their parents would hover over them and say, You gotta throw up. You have to throw up because you gotta make weight. You know, if not, then you're not gonna wrestle. Yeah, that's you know? awful. I've that's I've seen up, that. Yeah. I've seen that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so terrible. Or, you know, they put plastics on and they're like, they're bundled up and they're running, you know, and then they can't even hold themselves up and, they're, and their coaches are trying to run with them yeah. to hold them up, you know? Like, it's just not good, man, you know? So if that's the case, man, I'm just like, go up, yeah, get strong, learn some technique. That way you'll have fun, you I know? I like that. So so I I don't want to keep you much longer, <clears throat> and I know you love talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. So I I'm might gonna, I'm gonna have to give these like a quick, you know, yeah. as quick as you can response. Yeah. This is from Noah dot underscore dot Segura. How to stay motivated when not motivated. Just a quick <laughs> tip. What would you That's give That's one him? of my wrestlers, man. Noah Segura. Well, tell him. Yeah, man. So um, how to stay motivated. I mean, you just got to you gotta understand why you're doing it in the first place. That's you good. Know? And you got to understand your why. Why? We why are you doing it? <laughs> we why? talked about it a couple yeah. episodes ago. Yeah, you got to understand your why. You know, if you understand your why, then you have a purpose. Then you understand what you need to do rather than rather than your coaches having to hound you or your parents having to hound you to do the right thing. You know, you have this you have this like internal gauge within you that like wakes you up if you need to get up, you know, and do it. You know, like internal motivation, you know. And so, you know, if you have external mo or an extrinsic motivation, it's gonna be very hard for you to motivate yourself. Yeah. yeah. Because it's got to be intrinsic. It's got to be in from within. It's got to be internal. Thank you know. <laughs> yeah. So, if if that's not the case, man, it's going to be very hard for you to succeed what you want to succeed in that sport or endeavor or whatever yeah. you want to plan to do. Did you hear that, Noah? Uh, <laughs> he knows, <laughs> man. I've told him that. He knows. This I'm gonna tell him again. Uh, from B L K D G M. Oh, I know him. What was his most memorable win? Oh wow, I got a lot of them. 
Um, I would have to say Tim Boach. That was your most memorable? Mm. You're so dominant, though. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah. Or like or like Damian Maya. I like when he flew. Did you ever watch the Tim Boach fight? He like I don't flew know. I don't over think so. and did like a cartwheel. Yeah. Uh, um, or or uh, Chris Lieben. All right, we don't need you to name all your wins, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like, <laughs> you're just saying, you're asking me. I'm just most um, memorable. All right, so we got three. This is from Jeff Dot DPWC. How has fatherhood impacted your perspective as a coach? Oh, that's man. deep. Man, so f- f- coaching and fatherhood, it's a lot of a lot of the same. I mean, because spoke on it, and I'm loving yeah, him. I'm yeah, him it's, love. it's 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 the same. And yeah, yeah. I mean, it's literally like being a dad. It, huh? it is being a dad, and it's and it's, you know, being a coach. Like sometimes you got to be tough on them. Sometimes you have to love on them. Hmm. You know, but they have to know that the reason why you're doing it is for their betterment or That's for their other, development, their gain. You know? Yeah. For their gain, yeah. Because if they question that, then you're not being, you're not doing your job. You're not mm-hmm. being a good father or a good coach. You know, um, I think I think with being a father, like, like for me, like my son, I coached my son, and it's difficult to be a coach and a father at the mm. same time. Yeah. It's very difficult. But when it was time to coach him, I would coach him up. When it was time to be his dad, I would be his daddy. That's cool. You know? Yeah. So, My dad coached me in, in hockey, yeah. so I understand yeah. that for sure. Yeah. And I would. this is what I would do. I would film every one of his matches, and I would hold my phone like this, and I would, I would film every one of his matches. And I learned how to film without watching the screen <laughs> because I was coaching him. Yeah. And then what I would do, I was like, Hey, you know where my phone's at. If you want to go over like some technique that we did wrong that 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 we did wrong during the match, let's go over it. That's I made cool. my garage into a wrestling room. Yeah, you did. And and he's like, "Okay." And so he would do that and made would just leaps and bounds like from the year before like he That's would cool. improve so much and and then I would, you know, shut it off and be daddy. We would play card games, or we mm. would we'll go go out, watch movies, and uh, you know, and I would have one on ones with all my kids, not yeah. just him, but like, you know, with with Alexa and and Aaron and Elise, you know, and I would um, go out and do things with them too, you know. So it's just, you know, to be a coach and a father, like you. You gotta coach him up in life, man. I mean, mm-hmm. I see, I see. There's a lot of parallels with the two. So yeah. these are, I 100%. think these are fairly easy. This is from uh, Arthur from Ask My Roofer podcast. Does he have a favorite fight that he was in? And what is your biggest fight game regret? Um, favorite fight. Favorite fight. Um, I would have to say. Chris Lieben was one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorites, man. <laughs> but Chris Lieben, I never had anybody quit on the stool on me before. And he was one of the toughest dudes out there. Oh, yeah. And I remember the day I before, rem- he like came nose to nose. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and we were buddies. And all of a sudden, I was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to knock Mark, you Mark out. Mark Vallejo said, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, going to knock you out, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Um, but I think that was one of my favorite ones. Um, I remember I was standing over him. He was on his butt against the cage. And I just threw like an uppercut that hit him square yeah. in the face yeah. as hard as I could. And that dude just stood up like a zombie and just <laughs> plowed the floor. And I was like, dude, you are... <laughs> A beast. Dude, like, wow. I couldn't believe it. Like, that would knock out Superman. You know? <laughs> and he just, like, dude, dude, just as far as I applauded for, I was like, golly. But, um, but he, 
but he he sustained a lot of a lot of big hits, so that's why I think he didn't. He said no moss on the stool, man. So that was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, biggest fight game regret. Uh, I cut too much weight. Damn, that's I should have. Yeah, I should have went up to two hundred five. Um, yeah. It sucks I, like I, the energy out of you, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, I would, I would cut down from like two forty, two fifty down to 185 oh yeah and i would do that like regularly right yeah and 240 to 185 yeah man sometimes i would be i mean when i when i cut for tim boach i was 265 dang i'm 195 and would have a hard time going to 185 yeah i know so it's crazy i mean i I mean that's large my camps were largely to lose weight and not to get better. Yeah. Know? So that was that was one thing that I I I wish I didn't do. I regret. Yeah. I think doing. the most important question of the night though is if Kuya needs a new sidekick, <laughs> let me know. Yeah. You nice. could be like the half the half white you could, sidekick. You, you could be my adobo boy. There we go. Oh! That's some adobo adobo drumsticks. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, all right, let, let, well, second to last because there's another good one. Yeah. Would you want your son to get an MMA? No. I that would not. <laughs> well I like that answer. No. I mean I mean if he really, really wanted to do it, you know, I mean, cause I mean, he was in the gym, so he knows jujitsu. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah. he's got Muay Thai. He's a southpaw, and he's athletic. He knows how to wrestle. I mean, we'll see what happens, but I hope he doesn't. You know, how old is he? He's uh, nineteen. Nineteen. Redshirt. Yeah. No, redshirt freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. Yeah. Uh, NTB underscore Mama. What is the future of girls' high school wrestling, and how can we grow the sport? Oh, man. She also asked, being such a legend, how do you stay so humble? Oh, shoot. (laughs) Um, Women's wrestling is growing big time. It's one of the fastest growing sports out there right now. And, um, you know, with with women's and girls wrestling in high school, um, there's there's a lot of participation happening. Mm. Um, I'm coaching a lot of girls right now. Yeah. And... You know, I used to coach some girls um, earlier, um, you know, with, you know, Amanda Hendy and, you know, um, Christina Zamora. And I used to coach, oh, yeah, I coached Helen Maroulis as well. And she's our first Olympic champion, first women's Olympic champion. I coached her too. But, I mean, there's just in the fact of, like, participation of girls wrestling and women's wrestling, it's it's grown that's cool. big time you know and so i see it i and it's and it's an, it's an olympic sport you know and so um a lot of people a lot of women a lot of females are getting into the sport now which i love yeah i love that i want my daughter to wrestle in jiu-jitsu for sure yeah, she's man. two right now so she's got like a couple more years awesome i'd I'm love gonna, to coach her I'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna be texting you hey can you uh my daughter's ready that's what's up man yeah i'll coach her up uh, last question from D dot love underscore eighty four from the D uh, D loves special sauce <laughs> podcast. All right. Um, favorite memories from Rain and who hits the hardest out of everyone he's competed against? Oh man, you know I have a lot of memories from Rain, but the memories I I love the most are the after practices. Those where we used to. <clears throat> We used to like joke around and like, just like, you know, <laughs> hang out and like talk trash to each other. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, we used to have a lot of get togethers, right? You remember our get togethers? We used to have like, you know, poker nights. We used to have, um, you know, viewing parties and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Those were our, those were my favorite, like potlucks, um, just hanging out. And and not, well dodgeball dude those (laughs) those were the best yeah dodgeball um you know those were the best just hanging out you know um and creator creating tighter bonds and relationships with one another you know that was the best um you know um and the hardest hitters um well chris weidman hit me pretty hard (laughs) 
and I have a scar to 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 remember him by. That's crazy. Um, right on my forehead, right here. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know, man. In that fight, I had a broken foot going into that fight, and uh, you know, I was like, man, I can beat this dude. Like, I'm just, this this is gonna be mine, you know. And then I had the worst weight cut ever because I couldn't run. You know, it was just it was just all bad. But in my mind, I still I still can beat him. But yeah. But um, I couldn't push off my back foot. That sounds... And, um, and I'm never one to, like, pull out of a fight, you know. And, and I, you know, that's another thing I regret is I went into a lot of fights injured. Yeah. You know, and instead of just pulling out. But I didn't have that luxury because my fighting was subsidizing the gym. And if I didn't fight, like, we would that. have a hard time. Yeah, and so you need that bills. capital, yeah. Yeah. Paying Double edged sword. Yeah, it was it was it was tough, man. But and a lot of people would argue it shouldn't have been that way, you know. But you know, it was that way, and I didn't have any way around it. So, but but at the same time, for me, like I didn't I didn't really care because, like I I loved that place. I loved mm-hmm. the gym, and I loved the people that were inside the gym. And so it wasn't it wasn't like a burden to me, I guess, yeah. you know, it was, I gladly did it, you know, I didn't, like, I didn't say, oh man, I got to put six G's on this gym right now or seven G's and I was just dropping just cash on, yeah. on the place. Like I didn't care, you know, I didn't really it was your care, baby. You know? Yeah. It was like something we were growing, you know, but, uh, I understand that all too well, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I know. So, but, uh, but yeah, I, I have a lot of fond memories of that place, man. And, and it's the people. It's the people of the gym, you know. So, yeah. That's good. There you go, man. Um, where can people find you? Um, yeah. And where can people find the Lumpia movie? <laughs> so you can hit me up on you know Instagram, on Facebook. Damn, um, I think I you can have, you know, you can direct message me or... Or message me on Messenger, you know, whatever I know, and I'll get back to them. And I do, I, you know, I'm usually really good at getting back to people. Um, so you can reach me on all the social media outlets: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can go to LumpiaMovie.com, and you know, look for updates as far as like. And you know, whether we get it. picked up, <laughs> yeah, we, if we get picked up by a dis, uh, distributor, um, you know, or or um, you know, ways that you can watch it online, you know, you can do that too. So, um, so yeah, so there you go. Awesome. I said thank you. I yeah enjoyed getting to meet you. Awesome man. Or, thank you. Yeah. Got the Filipino bond. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. That's awesome. It's awesome. All right, man. You know, I love you. Appreciate you. I love you too, man. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Ben, another great episode. Thank you, sir. Heck yeah. And uh, remember, guys, that everything was impossible until someone did it. So, guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Fight Within Podcast. Find us on all audio platforms, including uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere you guys like to listen to it. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for continuing to to listen to it and watch it. Uh, We can see the growth on our analytics and just want to thank you guys for supporting us. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Kingdom Nutrition. Make sure you guys go and visit their site over at kingdomnutrition.com and enter promo code MFW10 to get 10% off your next purchase. Kingdom Nutrition carries the best sports supplements on the market. They manufacture and curate their own line of supplements with the highest quality ingredients, including a lean protein, weight gainer protein, pre-workout, BCAAs, and an array of other products. They've recently created the world's first vegan chickpea protein, and it tastes amazing. I'm a big dude. I like food, and I like chocolate. So when they they told me it comes in chocolate and vanilla, I got really happy. But 
if you're your workout enthusiast and you want to change up your diet, change up your protein, go check out their vanilla chickpea protein. It mixes well with anything. It'll blend great with a smoothie. So to get your hands on any of these products, just make sure and go visit kingdomnutrition.com. Remember to enter promo code MFW10 and get 10% off your next purchase. Let's go.